Hi, everybody. So today we're going to be talking about endovascular aneurysm repair, which is also known as EVAR. So let's go ahead and get into this. But before we do, I want to go through some anatomy of the aorta because that's what we do in endovascular aneurysm repair. So if we look, I mentioned this in my abdominal aneurysm video, you have the heart. So this is the right, uh, this is the left side of the heart, this is the right. The reason that's the left is remember, it goes by the person's side, right? So this is my left, that's going to be my left side of my heart right there. You're going to have an artery that comes out from here, and this is going to be called the aorta. Okay, and I'm not too interested in this part that's up in here. So the aorta is going to come down, and then you're going to have what we call the descending aorta. Your descending aorta can have two different parts. It's going to have the thoracic aorta, which I'm not too interested in in this video, and we're going to have the abdominal aorta. So what's going to happen when we get down to about T12, which is going to be somewhere right around in here, you're going to have your diaphragm. And what's going to happen is after this aorta crosses the diaphragm, it's going to become the abdominal aorta. So that's my abdominal aorta right there. Now, it's going to continue down, and then what's going to happen is we're not too, in, in this video, we're not too interested with the upper part of the abdominal aorta, the suprarenal portion. We're more interested in the lower part. So I'm not going to draw the celiac artery or the superior mesenteric artery. However, I am going to put right here, you're going to have something called the lumbar artery, which we're not going to be too interested in, in this. So you're going to have a lumbar artery, and then you're going to have what we call the renal arteries. Okay, and the renal arteries are going to go out to the kidney. So this is a renal artery here. This is going to be my right renal artery. This is going to be my left renal artery. It's going to be here. And then, like I said, they are going to go to the kidneys. So this is going to be my left kidney. This is going to be my right kidney over here. And normally your kidneys are basically at two different levels, but for this video, I'm just going to put them at the same level. Then below the kidney, what's going to happen is we're going to have the rest of these lumbar arteries, right? So you're going to have a lumbar artery. You have four pairs of lumbar arteries. So there's one pair, there's two pair, and this is going to be my third pair. So let's go like this. And then, like we said, they're pairs, so you're going to have some over here. Okay, and these are my lumbar arteries right here and then what's going to happen is as we continue down you're going to have another artery that comes off the front and this is going to be called our inferior mesenteric artery is going to be this guy right here Okay, and then just again, these are going to be my lumbar arteries. So the reason I'm drawing the lumbar arteries is they're going to play a role when we get to endoleak. So these are my lumbar arteries that are right here. You got them over here also, right? Then I have my inferior mesenteric there. Now what's going to happen is when we get down to about the level of the belly button, this is going to bifurcate. Bifurcate means it's going to split into two. So it's going to split into two. Okay. And basically the two parts it's going to split into is you're going to have something called the common iliac artery, which is right here. This is also the common iliac artery here. So let's go with C, I, A for the common iliac. Then if you notice, I have these openings here. So this is my abdominal aorta. My abdominal aorta has split into two. It's split into the right and left common iliac arteries. Now, if you notice, we have these branches that are here also. This is going to be called the internal iliac arteries. So I'm going to have my left one there and my right one there. And then this portion here, after the internal iliac artery, we're going to call this the external iliac artery. Okay, and then this is going to be my external iliac artery over here. And then what's going to happen is eventually the external iliac artery is going to pass a ligament, which we are going to call the inguinal ligament. Okay, so there's my inguinal ligament right there. 
And basically, once we get past that inguinal ligament, this is now going to be called the femoral artery. Now, here's the thing. This part's basically going to be the pelvis. This part here now will get into the thigh. So if I were to draw my inguinal ligament right there, we're going to be down here at the femoral artery. Again, I'm just going to put FA or femoral artery right there. Okay, that's going to play a role when we start talking about endovascular aneurysm repairs. So now I'm interested in this portion right here because here's the thing. About 60% of aneurysms are going to happen in the aorta, in the abdominal aorta. Of those 60%, about 80% are going to occur below these renal arteries. We call it the infrarenal abdominal aorta. And the reason being, like I mentioned on my abdominal aneurysm video, is because the walls get thinner and they're less elastic. So as a person gets older, the elastic fibers in there break down and they get atherosclerosis, which is also going to weaken the walls because it's going to block the blood flow to the walls of the aorta. And so when that happens, as blood comes through, it causes this to enlarge. So we're going to go, I'm going to go ahead and redraw this, but I'm only interested in this part right here, which is, like I said, is going to be the infrarenal, because it's below these arteries, infrarenal abdominal aorta. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at this, and I've already drawn my um, aneurysm right here, okay? So remember, when we're talking about an abdominal aortic aneurysm, we just call it triple A, AAA, right? So this is my aneurysm right here. Again, an aneurysm is just a big bubble that's in there. These are going to be my lumbar arteries. I, and then I'm just going to call this guy here, just to save space, I'm going to call this my inferior mesenteric artery right here. Okay, and then the other is what just called the lumbar artery. So this is a lumbar, this is a lumbar, this is a lumbar. I know I don't have them all drawn, but anyways, this is again is going to be my renal artery. And like I said, we are interested in the infraorbital, I'm not infraorbital, the infrarenal um, ab abdominal aorta here. So here's what's going to happen now is when they go in to fix this, when did they decide to fix it? Well, the thing is, if it gets to be more than 5.5 centimeters in a man, they're going to go in and they may do a repair on this. The other thing is, in women, if it gets to be about 5 centimeters, which is about 2 inches, it's about 2.2 inches, they may go in and fix this. Or if it starts to grow at a fast rate. So if it's growing by about 5 centimeters in about 6 months, they may also go in and decide to do a repair. These are all voluntary surgeries. So now, Let's take a look at what they do in an endovascular aneurysm repair. So if you recall, we were over here just a minute ago on the last video, and I said that we had the femoral artery, which was down in here after this inguinal ligament. So there's the inguinal ligament, there's the inguinal ligament. This is the femoral artery right here. Right? This, we said, was our, our external iliac, our internal iliac. I'm not going to write all those again. And then our common iliac. So here's what they're going to do when they do an endovascular aneurysm repair. They're going to go into the femoral artery. They're going to use a guide wire. And what they're going to do is they're going to have this guide wire come up here to just about those renal arteries. Then what they're going to do is they're basically going to have a catheter. And the catheter is going to have basically a graft or a stent in it. Following these guide wires, what they're going to do is they're going to go into here. They're actually going to go a little bit above these renal arteries, and they're going to open this up. A guy actually just turns it, right? And an anchor is going to come, and it's going to go onto the walls of the, uh, of the aorta that's above the renal arteries. Now, these are going to have some wires. And those wires now are going to come down and they're going to attach onto our graft, right? So what's going to happen is as the doctor turns the knob, this will open up, right? And then as it opens up, he's going to continue to turn the knob. And as he starts to pull this out, this is going to open up more and more. Now, remember, 
it's attached onto the anchors that are up there. So this is going to open up more and more. To give you an idea of what these look like, it's going to look like this. These are the anchors that you have on there, right? And again, I'm writing, I'm writing a three-dimensional structure in two dimensions. So that's the way the anchors are going to be, and they're going to attach onto the wall of the aorta, and then blood can still go through here, right? That's the opening there. Now, it's going to have two legs on it. It's going to have a long leg, and then it's going to have the shorter leg. All right? And that's the way it's going to look. This graph is going to look. But again, it's all wound inside of a, like a little catheter. And as the doctor pulls this down, this thing opens up. All right? And it's going to be like this. And then it's going to come down. And then what he's going to do is have it come into here. And this is not exactly how it goes. But anyways, this will give you an idea. And then what's going to happen is it's going to come down in here, and they can anchor this onto here. Now, we have the short leg over here, right? We have the short leg that's over here. So what they do now is now they're going to come over on the other side. They're going to use a guide wire again, and he's going to come in, and he's going to put the rest of this on to make this longer. Okay, and then this is going to come and attach onto here. Now I'm just not making it look like it's one hook. It's going to be like up in here. I'm also making this look like it's solid and it's not. So blood can still flow through there. So now what's going to happen is the blood doesn't have to come out into here, right? So the blood's going to come down into here and go down into the legs, right? And that's the way that the endovascular aneurysm repair works. That's the way the graft works is right there. So now, here's what can happen, is you can get leaks in this, okay? And there's going to be basically five types of leaks, and we call these endoleaks. And like I said, there's five types of endoleaks. Type 1 and type 3 need to be repaired, okay? And so we're going to look at these right now. So here's what's going to happen. We have, we have our whole thing here. Now, let's just say... Let's just say that for some reason this anchor becomes unattached, unattached from those, the walls of the abdomen. It could either be the whole thing or it could just be a portion of it. So let's just say we get a portion of it, it becomes unattached right here. Then what can happen is blood now can flow down into the aneurysm. So now the aneurysm can continue to increase in size. If it happens over, and it could, let's just say it happens on both these sides, right? And I have blood going in on all that. The other thing that can happen is this could become totally detached. And then what can happen is this whole thing could actually just kind of fall inside of the aneurysm, right? And if it falls inside the aneurysm, now they have to go in and repair it. So if they're going to go in and repair because now you can see my aneurysm starting to grow again. The last thing we want to happen is this aneurysm to burst. Right? So what they have to do then is usually they're going to have to open the person up and do a more, what they call an open surgery, and put, a, put another graft in there, another stent in there. So that's one of the things that can happen in a type 1 um, endo leak. So if it happens up here, it's called a type 1A endo leak. I can also have a problem occur here down in this area. And now what can happen is blood can actually back up into the aneurysm, right? For some reason, if it becomes detached here, I can get blood backing up into here, or it can continue down into the legs. But either way, they have to go in and they have to fix this. So they're going to come in and then reattach this onto there. If the problem is down in here or over in here, if the problem is down in here, this is going to be called a type 1B endoleak. So type 1A is if it happens up here in the abdominal aorta. Type 1B is basically going to be down here in what we call the common iliac artery. Right? So there's my type 1A and my type 1B. Now, there's also type 2. Type 2 is the most common one. Let me fix this here. All right, let's fix this here and reattach it up in here so it makes this look nice. And that way we don't have this problem here. Now, I could also have a type 2 endoleak, right? And in a type 2 endoleak, what's going to happen 
is when you had the aneurysm, the, the heart would pump and blood would come out into these areas here. And when it did, it would force the blood to go out through these lumbar arteries, the inferior mesenteric artery, right? And out to the body. And like I said, these lumbar arteries are also going to be attached to other arteries, right? So there they are there. And what's going to happen now is in a type 2 endoleak, because we no longer have the pressure of the heart beating there, because now all the blood's coming down in here, we don't have the blood pumping out that way, you can actually get the blood coming in the other way, right? Because now when the heart beats, don't forget, these arteries are still having blood flowing through them. So now that can come into this way and go into the aneurysm, right? And that can cause it to increase in size. So this is going to be a type 2. Right, a type 2 endoleak. So now I get, I get a retrograde flow of blood into the aneurysm, causing it to increase. The good thing about these is most of the time the doctors are just going to watch to see what happens with these because a lot of times they'll fix themselves. And just like we had with the type 1, we're going to have two types of these. And a type 2A, it's usually just going to be one artery that you may have the leak in. So let's say it's just this one right here, right? So you may just have the leak there, right? In a type 2B now, we're going to have basically more than one. You're going to have several of these that are going to be leaking in. The thing that can happen with these two is be, as the heart beats, the blood could flow backwards, right, retrograde. And then between beats, the blood goes that way. And then the heart beats, and the blood comes this way, and then the heart relaxes, and it goes that way. So that can happen in a type 2. Type 3 is going to take place right here, and these are more rare and type 3, but something's going to happen to the integrity of this overlap here, right? Because I had this guy come in, and now this area is overlapping, and what can happen is we have a problem with that overlap, and basically this becomes disconnected, right? So this is going to become disconnected now, and if this becomes disconnected, where's the blood going to go? Well, the blood's going to come, and now it can go into this aneurysm, once again causing it to increase in size, and if that happens, once again, we don't want this thing to blow up because it can be deadly, right? So, so we don't want that to happen, so they have to go in and fix this. They can fix this in a few different ways. One, they can just go in. They can replace all this, right? Two, what they can do is, like I said, they can replace it. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll just take the same one, put it back in, and they might even use glue and then just glue it on there. Or three, they could just put anchors on there to help, help it also. But this one does need to be fixed because of the fact that we got the leakage because there's a gap in there. So that's going to be my type three. Good thing about type three is these are rare. Okay, they don't happen too much anymore because the quality of these grafts has increased. The next type is going to be if blood just happens to leak out from this. <clears throat> so we have this stent or this graft in here and now blood's just going to leak out. And this one's getting more rare now, too. That's going to be a type 4. Good thing about type 3 is there's, there's not like 3A and 3B. So a type 4 now is basically the blood just leaks out from the graft. And so, um, and so that's kind of more rare now. And then the last one, I'm going to put the last one down here, is a type 5. And in a type 5... I'm going to put a question mark because everything's working okay. There doesn't seem to be any problems with the graft, but the aneurysm still increases in size. So, anyways, that's it for endovascular aneurysm repair and endo leaks. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. I'm going to leave this up here for just a few seconds so you can take a look at it. And thanks again for watching.